new one. one. Okay, fine. Yeah, got you. Yeah. There will be. I think the the bylaws of the community charges for the next town. Yeah. So our procedure and our procedure bylaw indicates it needs to be for the full year, irrespective of what council wants. Okay, but it, there will be a meeting not on a Monday night after immediately after the election, won't it? Uh, it is. It used to be the first Monday in December. The oh, meeting now is going to be the first Monday in November. Right, so it'll be the first yeah. rather than the second. Yeah, and that's uh, different from the regular. No, business. the second would be the regular business meeting. We're saying the same thing differently. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the so the fact that there will be a November one meeting does not need to be no, on this. No. 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 Okay, fair enough. The, 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 the first meeting, the regular meeting. Gotcha. <laughs> okay. So I suppose actually before I go to the stuff pulled, we should look at the twelve ten, which is the link for me. Oh no, no. I'm sorry. No, we're done. Consent agenda for my apologies. Three point seven. Let's so do three point seven seven. Yeah, seven nine no, ten. No, no, no. So who pulled Melanie three point seven? Melanie three point seven. No. Yeah, I'll yeah. just wait for Dan. Okay. I'm just making sure I have written that down. Yeah, I wasn't at the public hearing, but I did read through all the letters and everything. Sure. And um, the one that caught my eye was the one from Mark Edmonds about natural assets. And I don't know how one puts, you know, ask for amendment or inclusion, whatever. But I was just wondering, perhaps, as an additional amenity, if natural assets to deal with stormwater management could be included. I, I thought you raised some good points, so that was just my comment that I wanted to forward on. Sure. Um, I know that some of that is incorporated in the, the CREAS report that was done in, presented I think in July. Right. Included information sort of bioswales and yeah. stuff. And they had it at that point, not all of the site specific stuff is done. Um, so that could be part of our like, development agreements that that be emphasized where possible. Okay. Is that, are we putting vehicles for that? Stuff in the new subdivision servicing bylaw to have more of the Bioswale type stuff rather than the normal, what we're used to. Um, what's in our subdivision serving bylaw? I don't think includes, it's more developments based than, than how it's done. So it's more saying it needs to manage this amount of, you know, the, this storm event in the runoff can exceed this amount rather than, um, yeah. Mm. So, yeah, if, if these changes become substantive enough, we may have to go back to public hearing. Yeah. If, if, if we you know, we've gone through public hearing now on it, so it's, it's had its readings and so on. But um, what were you saying about the CREAS report? Can we just mm -hmm. emphasize it if it's already mm -hmm. been? Well, I just would have the same to the mayor as I would ask for a council resolution for any changes to the bylaw at this stage. Okay. So this wouldn't affect the bylaw. Okay. Oh, okay. This would be about. You know, any agreements that we have or kind of subdivision is just emphasizing those points. At the time in, of subdivision? In, yeah, in the, in the um, CREAS report already submitted by the applicant as part of their um, brief on stormwater, how they're going to manage stormwater. So it talks about some elements of natural element, of natural um, assets, like use natural assets towards stormwater management, and so we'll be working with the applicant to emphasize that. True. Fair enough. Um, I was interested in uh, comments from some of the neighbors, uh, two things. One person said that the uh, water level was the lowest they've ever seen it in the yeah. lake this year. Oh, and uh, <laughs> I, was, I was wondering where I would go to see, find the data on the water levels if I wanted to check that. Sure, so, Is so it on the website? So they were published, um, I don't know if we collect them somewhere, I know the Kobe water so the Kobe Water the Minutes, for example, published them. So I was looking at in November of 2016, the minutes um, included in that are um, tracking the lake and tracking usage throughout the year. So there are, I think they're often included in the annual reports or if Bob just public, Bob just brings them to the Kobe Committee on a, you know, each year. Okay, so they, oh, are sorry, they are tracked. They are tracked and they are published. And then the, the other part um, that I just wanted to be clear on, uh, people asked, um, how, uh, if I have a well um, nearby, uh, how how do I know that my I will still have water later or something like that? Do we have an answer? 
Um, so, I mean, some of the people who came to speak at Connolly Road, they have water licenses, some of them have water licenses from Terminal Creek. Um, so I think their, their concern would be one that, you know, that's not impacted. And I know that as part of our water license, we're required to ensure that Terminal Creek Disperses out yeah, so much water. water. So when, when the lake is low enough, like it was in the summer, or generally is in sort of August, September, until it starts to rain again, we're pumping water around the dam to ensure that there is sufficient water in Terminal Creek, and that's to meet the water licenses that are down over and um, fish habitat. Okay. Um, so that's that's number one. Um, number two, I guess, is that so any work done that runs into Terminal Creek um, falls under our development permit guidelines. So we're already requiring development permits that do not impact the water quality, and that's specifically, well, one, it's a riparian area, and then two, it's because there's water licenses on the creek itself. And then third, I guess, would be that if, you know, a catastrophic event takes place and, you know, somehow it's impacted, that the, the, the property is essentially between Grafton, the Grafton development and um, Snug Cove, with the water treatment in place, would be eligible to come to apply to join Cove Bay Water. Okay. They would be subject to our normal expansion policy and normal, you know, accounting at the time and they'd be paying for their infrastructure, but that would be an option that would be mentioned. Thank you. Um, when I chaired Cove Bay Water back in 2003 2004, we had a 50 year drought, mm -hmm. the lowest that it, that it had been. And I got measuring devices and stuff and stood out on rocks and, and figured out drops and heights and so on. And I went back uh, last year and there was it goes down about a meter from the old height. Uh, and it stays within just a matter of inches and has not varied. And I asked Bob to put the Kobe water gauges the height at the dam. So it has nothing to do with the height of the lake because the water has to be pumped from the lake over the dam, and so there's no water in, in that area. And he was going to put on a stand, or what, whatever they call it, uh, thing on the float out in the lake, but he just didn't do it. So the number <coughs> of dogs on the lake height are not correct. Uh, they're, they're, sure. they're from not in the lake, they're from the other thing. But having said that, uh, I've checked it many times, and I actually have photographs of it from this year from taken in two different months. And it really hasn't gone down anymore uh, when you're standing on My concern rock. was just that we were tracking it and... Yeah, but not well. <laughs> I mean, seriously, we should... Uh, it was a recommendation that, that I had, had made uh, that Public Works uh, get an actual floating gauge out in the lake. And yeah, I don't know, maybe sure he's done it now. I don't know. Yeah, but, but like it can I all say, be done electronically, and it's pretty simple. Well, yeah, you just have to have a battery, and you have to have a thing, and it's got to send it off. Uh, can, and, can we, um, I would just like to make sure that we're, with climate change and with these changes that we've got the best information going forward, and I know that the technology keeps improving, so can we ask uh, uh, public work staff to um, report on the kind of data that... Metering system. Or, yeah. Yeah, it's a yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Do you want to make a resolution in that? Um, yeah. I think we can just ask. Uh, oh, yeah. 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 yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Thank you. I just wanted yeah. to find out about how yeah. we're collecting this info and what. Sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Respond sure. to those questions. Yeah. Somebody else had something they wanted to discuss. Melanie? Yeah, I just wondered do I need a, um, a resolution in regards to the natural assets being well, discussed? At, see, that's uh, a tough one because some divisions are, are dealt with uh, solely by the approving officer and deputy approving officer. And the idea is that it's not. Like the, not influenced um, by council. So certainly as a proving officer, we can take that under advisement and work with our hopefully soon to be future deputy approving officer, shameless plug there, and um, we'll, we'll look into it. Okay. Can we commit, can we commit to that? Okay, cool. Okay. 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 So, um, I move that we adopt the recommendation as per the agenda. Second. Seconded. Um, call for question on the paper. Okay, and that's passed in. So the next one is 3.9. Oh, we forgot to pull 3.8. 3.7, too. We, pulled, yeah, we, we just talked to 3.7. No, I just realized we didn't pull 3.8. Oh, yeah, okay. so um, can we deal with that? How do we deal with that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, 
Um, yeah, okay, so let's defer that to the next meeting. Uh, what's the deal on that? The deal on that is that uh, the information that Bob gave us in reference to the position of the Hood Point Homeowners Association does not appear to be the position of the Homeowners Association. There seems to be some confusion. There's oh. some confusion on that, so I'd like to uh, get that clarified before we... It's a motion to defer. Well, ah, so... I thought we were going to have discussion before we went... You did promise Councillor Mason. Yeah. Oh, okay. What do you I promise Councillor Mason. So the, the topic of speed bumps comes up every once in a while. And I know it's been, so I was just wondering, because there seems to be um, a recommendation that we don't install them, but they want them installed, um, I was wondering if we could also refer this to BIMTAC to see if there's any other, other solutions to this. Because we do have on the work plan that we put, allowed to put into detail today, speed reduction framework and policy coming up. You can have it. <laughs> I, I, I would be very appreciative of that because it's, 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 I, I worry about dealing with areas of the island in isolation. Yeah. So depending yeah. on who will show up at a council meeting and I think looking at it policy-wide and something, I, I, but I think maybe also looking at other ways yeah. of being able to calm, because we always seem to come up with the same thing that yeah. people want the speed bumps, but public works doesn't seem it's feasible because of a whole host of yeah. valid reasons. So there must yeah. be other ways that we can. Mm -hmm. Traffic, traffic calming in general. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, well, the only yeah. thing I was going to suggest was that little sign that was down there that says your speed is that was on the main road. For, okay. This is temporary. Yeah, they come and go. No, they. I think I think impact looking at maybe a, a policy put in place. Um, or a range of options. options on the work plan. It's on the work plan. Okay. 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 Three ten. So we definitely so uh, so three nine is deferred. Mm -hmm. To a future meeting and refer to the attack. Do we we'll vote on that? I think it's a good idea. Yeah, to sure. defer. All in favor? For a policy. Yeah, defer the impact for uh, island wide policy. And I think we just need to get it sort of sorted before spring comes. Yeah. And that's. Right. That's what we're going to do. Okay, 310. Yeah, this is one um, I pulled in. It's a one deferred, so it actually goes back rather a long way. And on, on that. Um, on that uh, Snug Code Sewer uh, Management Committee meeting, there was an action item that really caught my attention, yeah. and it is going back. And it, it is one sentence, and it says, request that the engineers write a letter to Miguel Cabanzo, proprietor of the proposed vodka facility, reiterating the potential costs of the commercial connection to the community sewer, and ensuring there is a paper trail where the payment of these costs, where the payment of these costs become contentious, and then in brackets, Bob Robinson. Now, I'm, I'm sorry, again, this left me with a couple of really sort of, hmm, I wonder, let's see where this is going. Uh, it makes it, made me feel that Miguel Banstock needed someone in, on his side, and um, given how far that property is advanced, I rather hope potential costs of commercial connection are long behind us. It's a bit late to be looking at potential costs. I'm just hoping it's the way the minutes reflect this and that the issue has been dealt with because it just didn't read well and, and I, I, when I read it I thought, boy, let's just, let's just ask the question. Okay, so um, I was at that meeting and uh, this is a fairly informal group uh, discussion. I think it might be ca difficult to capture the um, in the minutes very well. Um, part of what I recall is that uh, uh, our um, director of public works had been uh, talking to the proponent about how <coughs> uh, a distillery, which is going to create large volumes of liquid uh, waste. Um, could put them into the Snug Cove sewer in a way that didn't overload the sewer right. at any one point. So there are tanks and there is timing and there is, uh, and they, the point is that this had been a long discussion and uh, that uh, the idea of putting some of it down in writing so people 10 years from now or whenever could refer to it. Yeah. That's what a it was about. Absolutely fine. It gets lost in the translation. It just did not read her on it. It's now part, you, if you excuse the expression, it's water under the bridge. <laughs> um, well, these are still draft minutes, 
we could ask no, people to. No, no, no. We it, dealt with because it. Because we only it. meet a couple times it's, a year. Exactly. It wasn't an issue. It just read rather strangely. No. It, it is something that could be perhaps tidied up by staff. I think she keeps notes. and I'm uh, sure. I think it'll be good. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. we can, um, uh, rather than accepting these uh, minutes, rather than accepting these minutes now, we could uh, uh, return them to staff to consult with Bob for. Clarification. See, I don't even know when we're going to meet again next. Yeah. May I suggest that perhaps it just requires a deletion here and ensuring that there is a paper trail, period? Well, but they have a reason for this, I believe, and I think the reason is that, that depending on how this is pumped out of that building, and they have big holding tanks downstairs, so depending on the volume that they do, the waste that they have, how long they let it settle, all of this stuff, they could overload that system if the guy just turns on the, the pump in the middle of the night. So uh, uh, yeah. the sewer system has grave concerns about the potential problems that could be brought about the whole system from that, and they want to caution the owner. Yeah, I know. This I has, to be, about it. has to be very, very careful. So I, I think that if this reflects, and it probably does reflect what they say, I mean, I, I would leave it there because these are the minutes, right? It, I mean, it might and not be will, politically correct, but it doesn't mean they didn't say well, maybe it. I mean, I'm on the Summer Car Sewage Committee, and we yeah. will look at these minutes in time, and I will uh, make a point to bring these up and make sure that they would accurately reflect. Because this project is well down the line, and you, know, you kind of think we'd like to get these details, but they're well, really, yeah. really, really significant before we start the project, let alone in the middle of it. Uh, well, this is the first project of this kind. We've never had a distillery in Snug Cove before, <laughs> uh, let alone uh, an industrial <coughs> scale kind of activity. The first of many. Uh, <laughs> okay, it's it, 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 okay. Okay, we'll talk more later. Oh, it's done. Yeah. I had originally pulled these minutes uh -huh. for the last meeting, but by the time we got to that part of the meeting, yeah. I had left. So oh. we just accepted them or deferred them to this meeting. Right. So the things that I was raising were that one that Michael has just raised because commercial connections pay a lot more and if they're running through an awful lot of water then have they realized how high their bill is going to be. I mean maybe it's that right. interpretation right. too. Right. Um, the other is um, the immediately above it bullet request that the consulting engineers write a letter to the Snug Cove House Society referencing the report and informing them the municipality is unable to make a decision regarding their sewer connection payment at this time. What is that all about? Or is that a typo? Or should it have been... Um, well, they don't have many units they have. To be honest, I don't recall. <laughs> I didn't read my minutes. I'm sorry. I mean, we I did the agreement where they paid the lump sum, so yeah. I was totally sure, curious okay, they're, as to... They're so whatever, whatever, whatever the number is. This is an advisory yeah. committee. Yeah. Why don't I ask Bob to provide clarification on those two points and report back to And the third was the one I raised today: the expected surpassing of 100 cubic meters per day discharge rate, which would trigger wastewater effluent regulations and the result in operational cost increases. And that was referring to a report from public work per wood report about sewer capacity. That refers to we've got a massive we've got discharge out into yeah. the street into the town. Right. Yeah. Did you, did you want to clear that yeah. that was partly what the uh, um, <clears throat> uh, distillery discussion was about to make sure that we didn't go over that limit. And uh, and that part of the capacity issue is not just how much can the sewage treatment facility take it's how much can our outflow permit uh, allow us to put out in any particular time. And so it's a, it's a regulation thing, and we're coming up against the barriers. Um, and uh, so, so that, not, that's what these different engineering reports are about. Right. So this has nothing to do with the capacity of the plant. It no, has to do with that's the, what I, the, I thought. the and license. But, but the license be, so. It sounded like that was more of an issue than the plant capacity was. These are all questions that Bob can yeah. clarify. Has anybody actually checked with a distillery to see what kind of output they're going to have? Or that's what the discussions Bob was having with them about. Yeah, yeah. Okay. so he doesn't know what they're wanting. And volumes that's what one of those engineering report was about. Okay. Yeah. And they, so they built big tanks and all kinds of things to cope with that so that it's already level. Yeah. And, and if you look at the report, it says the plant is currently operating at a level that is very close to triggering wastewater affluent regulation. Yeah. 
This regulation imposed by Environment Chem in 2012 applies to all plants operating at discharge rate over 100 cubic meters per day. Oh, well, okay. Oh, we so, three, four, five. Yeah. So, so, so up to 100 cubic meters, we don't have the regulation over 100 cubic meters. Yeah, and there's all sorts yeah. of trigger a higher level of monitoring reporting and communication. Oh, okay. Council direct or direct staff to uh, provide clarification on uh, sewage related issues as per this bunch of minutes. Yeah. 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 Anybody like to second that? I'll, I'll second that. that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to get it out of here. You're already here. Carry it. Okay. Get it out of here. And, uh, yeah. and uh, sir, yeah. uh, before you go, we've got no. one more thing. Yeah. And that's just 12.10. Uh, that's uh, the last thing in the information item. I just wanted to bring this to everybody's attention. Um, this was just released uh, last week. Um, from the uh, Forest Practices Board of British Columbia. They're the independent uh, watchdog or independent oversight uh, committee for forests and, uh, um, law, uh, and forestry and range practices act. And uh, they are recommending uh, these changes necessary to improve stewardship of BC's forest and land ranges, blah, blah, blah. And um, we urge governments to quickly address these priorities, which they've made these recommendations before, but some of them are exactly the kinds of things that are our concerns about logging. Oh, yeah. So it's just this nice, neat little five recommendation package uh, that I wanted to refer people to because it, it is something that we could send on to people or to refer to if you need to know uh, what other people think of this too. Is that a provincial board? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, no, it's, it's gold. So this, is, this is cool, and this is exactly what we needed for our meeting with the Forest Ministry. Have you read it? Not yet. It's okay. yeah. But it's, it, it, it says the forester has not had the power to stop logging or road construction if the legislation was met, and the, chief, the forester should have this power. Uh, um, where where proposed the, activities put local environmental and community values at risk. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it really, it's just like it's huge. It's just perfect. And mm -hmm. the, the other thing was the la, the, uh, the one on forest mm -hmm. in our last package. Oh. Oh, yeah. The um, Maureen has a question. Salt Spring Island, where they're looking there, and another area in Vancouver Island, where they're putting no cut areas of putting them sort of into a protected area. Douglas Douglas close to Douglas Fir. Oh, okay. and, yeah. yeah. So Islands Trust is writing a letter um, asking that, that they evaluate all the, the islands areas and they will include asking the Chilliwack office to they may. they may include Okay, Morgan. I, I just wanted to make sure that the folks from um, Defend Islands Forest were aware of this. I'm yeah. sure they are. Mm -hmm. But um, I'll just send it to I'll send I understand. Sure. You did. Okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah. I won't. Maybe if Sue Allen knows, they. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. She's very. She's very close to one of them. Uh, yes. But it's a good point. Okay. Yeah. No, it is. And then, and like I said, it's golden. It's just. And because I knew you had that. The one thing okay. <coughs> is that um, for that Douglas fir forest thing, we're not actually a Douglas fir forest. By no, I know we're, we're, we're the, the hemlock, but they're wanting them to look at that area, that as well as. Oh, okay. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll see yeah. if they do. It, it, it kind of depends on how many, how many forest districts or whatever they call you send it to. And well, there's whatever. only three. Yeah. Yeah, in yeah, our but, area, and there are two of them that cover Bank of Brown and the Sunshine Coast. But, but you, never mind. It's it's just we're not sure. There being no further business before this council, we are adjourned. A pleasure spending all day with you. Go back and we're going back to close.